Hurricane season is officially here and one research facility right here in the Carolinas has been working year round on storm proofing your homes. A meteorologist and climate specialist Elisa Rafa takes us into the test lab where category three hurricanes are simulated inside. <laughs> It happens all too often. A destructive hurricane rushes water in, peels off roofs, topples homes, Whoa. and changes lives forever. But this type of destruction can change lives for the better. You're looking at a wall of 105 powerful fans, so powerful up to 350 horsepower, can simulate winds up to 130 miles per hour. That's near category three hurricane strength. It helps the researchers here get a little bit of taste of what Mother Nature could do, but inside their lab. We've got a lot of them and for good reason. Those six by six foot wind turbines simulate the eye of the storm at the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety. We want to give the most real world like uh, feeling in here. Cutting edge research uses full scale models of our homes and mimics real world conditions to test hurricane resilience. Sarah Dillingham is the senior meteorologist at the facility right in our backyard in South Carolina. What we're looking at are how are buildings put together? How are those individual components pieced together and how are they installed? Are they installed properly? Because sometimes all that matters is those proper connections, whether that be your, your roof to your walls or your walls to your foundation. Her team tests entry points for wind, using real wind observations from hurricanes making landfall, and even rotating the homes on a turntable to simulate a spinning storm. For hurricanes, we know that the wind may be coming uh, at multiple sides of the building for a long duration. And so we're also looking at the component failures and the fatigue of some of those components as well. Hurricanes often pack a punch with rain. These sprayers can hose the home with water that rushes in with the category three force winds. It can be equivalent to about eight inches per hour of wetting onto a structure. So we can really get those rainfall rates very similar to what you might experience in a real hurricane. For springtime research, they can even pelt the homes with lab simulated hailstones. We're very unique here in that we can do that kind of testing and find out where those vulnerabilities are in the home. And it's those vulnerabilities that once identified, then we can apply the right mitigation to try and prevent that kind of damage in the future. One of the most common vulnerabilities in the home is the garage doors. Garage doors have been identified as a large vulnerability in, in regards to allowing wind into the home that can, can then cause a cascade of failures. Another point of injury for damage is the roof. It's often the first line of defense for any home. But not every home is brand new. We're standing in the roof aging farm, dozens of just standalone roofs, so shingles can get natural wear and tear from Mother Nature, whether it's Carolina rain, heat, humidity, or wind. They can then take these shingles inside the lab to see how they can withstand strong winds and even hail. Underneath, the shingles should be more layers of protection. These little green caps, and then there's a nail right there. We were able to demonstrate IBHS's fortified roof. It's like a gold standard of storm protection. The green caps hold the roof's lining down better, and it was hard to remove. The wind is trying to pull up on this roof cover, and so if the wind can get underneath this, it can rip everything off. That's exactly what happened. That was really easy. I, I can just rip it off. Without the extra pop of protection. Open roof seams layer wind damage with flood concerns, allowing heavy rain to creep into the seam amplifying the damage inside the home. We've now got, um, we're gonna have to make a roof claim because our roof cover is damaged and now we're also gonna have to make a water claim because we didn't have that sealed roof deck so that water is gonna get in. The small cracks are needed to let the roof materials expand and contract with summer heat. But if you cover them up with tape, you can avoid water damage. We tested it out. On the fortified side, all of it is being redirected into your gutter. But without the seals, 60% of the water seeped into the small crack of the unsealed home, meaning an extra insurance claim. Oh! Coupled with visits to storm-ravaged communities, 
This decade-long fortified program is one of the many ways IBHS puts its science into action, modernizing and updating building codes all over the country. Building codes, they are updated on a three-year cycle, so as we're constantly doing research here in the test chamber, uh, we can then make recommendations to the various code agencies that are going to be uh, looking at what are the things that we need to be incorporating in this next iteration of our building codes. Florida is a great example of this. Hurricane Ian, while very devastating from a surge perspective, Hurricane Ian was also a success story as far as wind mitigation is concerned. After Hurricane Andrew in 1992, the Sunshine State enforced some of the most robust building codes in the country. We are watching the building codes, the modern building codes in action play a role to stop um, the loss that we are seeing. This is the kind of resilience IBHS research works to bring to states farther inland because surprisingly, and I think that when you say something is built to code, sometimes we take that for granted. Not every state has a mandated building code. I look at a new home that I may have just purchased and was like, oh, well, this is everything I wanted. Of course it was built to code or it couldn't be here, but we're not asking the question, what code was in place? How old is the code? How well is it enforced here? These questions help educate all communities and ensure we are building right at the most pivotal time. Billion dollar disasters have increased five-fold since the 1980s, where we used to see 20 separate billion dollar disasters in a decade, we are now seeing them in just one year. Each of the last three years have all had more than 15 separate billion dollar disasters. This year is already on pace to hit another top spot. The average number of disasters in a year is just seven. As these disasters increase, the time to recover between them is decreasing significantly. Rebuilding resilient is more important now than ever before. Hopefully that we will use those opportunities where the disasters are very unfortunate, but we use those as educational and learning opportunities to build better for the next time. And while we always hope there is never a next time, uh, that was my house. Science tells us hurricanes are becoming slower, wetter, and more intense. We want to break the cycle of damage. And the best way to prevent extreme loss? When we do it the second time around, let's use those opportunities to build stronger. Is to rebuild resilient. Meteorologist Elisa Rafa, Queen City News.